Mom, can we please, please take a break from studying after school and go to the lake? Absolutely not. You're on lockdown all weekend. You kids are gonna turn any minuses into pluses. Not the way Jimmy does it, with a pen. Morning, guys. Is that break skinny jeans? Should we say something? Shh, shh, shh. Hey, Dad. Mm. Could we please try and convince Mom to let us have the afternoon off from study for finals? Uh, I'm sorry, kids. Your mom and I are on the same page on this one. Mm. Hey, can I get that for you? Yes, please. Do I still have to study? Give me the damn bagel. Mm. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. No, thanks for coming by. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations on the show. It's fantastic. Thanks and so it's much. successful at the same time. That's amazing. I hope so, yeah. Oh, I think so. I like to think so. I watched it the other night. I loved it. I think it's great. Very cool. Uh, this show, I mean, this is a, many people call this a landmark show, uh, innovative, um, completely different for network television. Do you feel that way? Mm, yes and no. Um, the yes is first. Sure. <laughs> um, I, the, yeah. I, you know, I think the only way our show was going to be successful is if it looked and sounded like pretty much any old ABC sitcom with this, you know, subversive twist of my character being the narrator and being openly gay, you know? So I think that, in, in, in some way, is, small, uh, is like a small step in the right direction, you know, somewhat revolutionary. But, uh, but again, it looks like an ABC sitcom, and it sounds like an ABC sitcom, you know? Well, it's ABC. It's, it's very, I mean, ABC, NBC, CBS, it's almost impossible for them to sort of put something out that is radically different aesthetically than yeah, what they're Yeah, and it would, our show out. would have been canceled in a second if it, if it was something crazy different. Not know? everything can be American crime on, on That's ABC. Right. That's right, that's right, yeah. And uh, your casting in the show as the lead is, was kind of a big deal for the creator of the show, Todd Holland, right? He said that he wanted someone who was openly gay for the lead of the show, but he didn't really know how to go about casting that without being sort of wildly offensive in, in the attempt to, <laughs> to, to do that. Yeah, well, that's, you know, there are laws protecting, uh, you know, people who are auditioning. You're not allowed to ask about nationality. You're not allowed to ask about uh, sexuality. Uh, we're going to get rid of No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to do away with those. Um, he, you it know. It means getting more shows like the Real O'Neills. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I made it pretty clear in my test that I was gay. Um, and uh, in what in what way? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think the first question. I think they were surprised. The first question I asked in my test, I sat down and I was like, "How, how flamboyant is this kid?" You know. And they were like, "Interesting. We haven't been asked that yet." Um, because I think a lot of people read the breakdown or whatever, and they saw that he was gay. So they go in and they're like, "Oh, well, I'm just gonna play him." as a stereotypical gay man, you know? Or they're afraid to ask if uh, the character, how flamboyant the character is because they don't really have a, a sort of openness or comfort level with the fact that there is a sort of fluidity to how sure. people are. Sure, sure. And in asking that, I think I, I made it pretty clear that I, that I was homosexual and, then, and that I was an actor who could take direction, you know? Um, and so once I was cast in it, you know, I, 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 I've talked about this before. I think it's an important thing that like a gay kid play this character, somebody who really understands the coming out experience. You know, not that me and Kenny have had like, we don't have crazy similarities in our coming out experiences or even like as people. Um, but, you know, on a base level, uh, being gay and having gone through those things in my own life it's going to inform the story and inform the character and how I play it and how I tell it, you know? It, led, it lends a certain amount of authenticity to, yeah. to how you not just perform, but when you get on set and you're asked to do something and there's something in the script, you might have a question about how it's written, where it's going, that yeah. is informed by your personal experience. Yeah, 
yeah. to a, a straight actor would just kind of be like, tell me where you want me to go. Right, exactly, exactly. And I think a lot of times on TV, straight men playing gay characters do fall into the stereotypical traps, you know, like as, as wonderful and as much as I love Eric Stone Street as an actor, he's playing a pretty, you know, ridiculous stereotype of a gay man. You know? Was that something that you always noticed growing up when you, you know, when, when, when you realized your sexuality? Was that something that you sort of noticed about how straight people were portraying gay men on television? I don't know. It was never something I was really aware of. I wasn't like a huge TV watcher when I was younger. I was in theater and I was surrounded by like tons of gay men who were playing straight roles, right. you know, and vice versa. Um, Which must be so weird because you know when you get to television or when you get to film, you've heard stories, things are a certain way, but then when you get there and notice it, which I'm not saying that it, it's like that on this show, but when uh -huh. you notice it in the auditioning process and the casting process on other movies, other film, other shows, it must just kind of blow your mind having come from the theater world where anybody is anything and they're portraying anything. Yeah, yeah, there is a lack of creativity. <laughs> I'm just gonna just downing on Los Angeles right now. But um, I think there is a lack of creativity in the, you know, not only in the casting world in Los Angeles, but just in general in Los Angeles, there's like a weird closetedness that I've experienced in Los Angeles. Even like people who have like guested on our show, um, <laughs> I had like a weird experience where like this person who was on our show was like very blatantly flirting with me and like asked me to like come out. And I was like, or asked me to like go out. And I was like, I don't get what, like, I just turned, I was like, are you gay? And he was like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't, you know, I'm like, you know, go with the flow, you know, like whatever. And I was like, what is that? No, no. It was very odd. The flow, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. But I think there is like a weird level of closetedness in Los Angeles that just doesn't exist in New York. Do you think it's based on a lack of creativity or the sort of like, uh, I mean, in Los Angeles, that is the entertainment industry? Well, I mean, like, the lack ways. of creativity, in terms of casting, the lack of creativity is like, these casting directors will not give you a job, will not even see you for an audition if you haven't done something like that on camera before. Right. So, like, if I have, and this is the only thing that's like that I have on camera, this is like the only thing on my IMDb page, you know? Uh, so, I think a lot of people aren't willing to give me. Or aren't willing yet, you know, aren't are not yet willing to give me the opportunities to audition for other characters, you know, because well, they see I can do this very well, and they're like, oh, well, he does that one thing. Let let's you know give him opportunities to do more of that one thing. And I'm not, you know, I love this character, and it I, it comes to me very easily. But like, I'm an actor from New York. I've done a lot of like weird off Broadway theater. I want to you know keep variety in my in my career, you know? Well, that's such an interesting thing to bring up because for so long, uh, actors would say that they weren't willing to come out because they didn't want it to affect the roles that they got. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest, like, having come out, I can't say that, like, it hasn't, you know? I think it's still a process. It's still something that, like, we're learning to have to deal with and navigate, and I'm hoping that my show and myself, I'm hoping that we can be at, like, the forefront of that shift, you know? Well, you definitely are. One of the great things about the show is that the show isn't about your character coming out. Your character comes out really in the in the pilot. Mm -hmm. And then the show is about this family. And so often it's not about the family grappling with their son being gay. There are right. so many issues. I think a lot of times it like the, telling the story of like a coming out experience, a lot of times it becomes about like this person's uh, inner struggle, you know, with their sexuality. And I think what's nice about our show is that that's not what it's about. It's about this kid like, you know, going through adolescence, you know? It's not about the, the inner struggle. It's about him like learning how to be a person in the world more so. You know? Well, I was thinking about the last episode that I watched, which was the mesh shirt episode, uh -huh. which was really great. And I think a lesser show, your character would have just been right at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But you and Martha Plimpton both are right in different ways. She needs to be a bit more open and, and, a, and, a, and a little less tough on you. But the mesh shirt did look bad. And wasn't cute. Was right wasn't cute. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. good. No. And the Tim Gunn moment with the mesh shirt arms at the end, I was very yeah. much kind of, I've had a moment like that where I put a tank top on and someone's been like, you make me realize I need to go to the gym. You yeah. put a real I, shirt on, I Ricky. burned that shirt right quick after filming. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's a it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing getting to play this character and uh, again like navigating the world. Watching and also not just that. playing this character, but <clears throat> playing this character within uh, a family dynamic that I don't think we've ever yeah, seen. There's there's a scene with Jay Ferguson and I. Uh, a few episodes ago, it was a Romeo and Juliet, it was the school play episode, and we have a scene in the uh, in the garage where he comes to me and he says, you know, you've had 16 years to get used to the fact that you're gay, you're, you know, and we've only had six weeks. And uh, I think that's a cool thing, you know, to get to share, you know, it's not just about the person who's coming out, it's not just about their struggle, but like, Yes, they've had to struggle and they've had to come out to all of these people, but like you can't expect people to, who, especially a mother who has grown up severely, you know, staunchly, staunchly Catholic, to just flip completely, you know? It's a process for everybody. That said, even within that process, they aren't, uh, they aren't what, we, what we normally see for a conservative family who's reacting to their, their son coming out. Usually, I think the stereotype is to be even more conservative, even angrier, mm -hmm. even, even, even more uh, sort of, in many ways, abusive towards, towards the child. But then they're just kind of figuring it out, which is sort of nice. You know, they're open-mindedly figuring it out. Yeah. Uh, at the end of our pilot, initially... <clears throat> Um, the tag of our pilot, which is now me and my siblings sitting on the couch talking about my brother's hair. But what it used to be, which wasn't filmed uh, in the first couple drafts, it was me coming out to my girlfriend, played by Hannah Marks, and she's like crying, and she's like, I guess I'm okay with this, but why are they here? And then like the camera pans, and it was supposed to be my entire family sitting there in rainbow sweaters, like totally okay with it, like totally on board, like yes, what's up, gays. Um, and Dan Savage came in, uh, he wasn't around for the filming of the series, but was for the filming of the pilot, and he came in and he was like, sat everybody down, and he was like, listen, Kids are getting kicked out of their homes every day for coming out. This can't be how this pilot ends. Wow. One, there's like nowhere for it to go, you know, there's no conflict, there's like nothing to be resolved within these like, you know, the 22 episodes that one would have with a full season of a show. Um, <clears throat> but like, let's take this as an opportunity to like tell that story in a comedic network television y way, you know? Uh, and so, they rewrote the tag. We they literally scribbled it on like the back of another script page. We memorized it like right there. Sat down and filmed it in like twenty minutes. Um, yeah, but that's it's an interesting thing, and I'm uh, I'm very happy that the show is what it is. And I think it would be a very it would have gone very very differently if that's how the pilot had ended. You know. Yeah, absolutely. What's it been like for you to sort of witness the. Uh the workflow and the structure of a network television show, 22 episodes, changing and ending right there and scribbling on the back of a napkin. I mean, everyone, I think, I think most people think of television as this sort of machine that pumps stuff out all the time, but when you're actually in a show that's making 22 episodes in one year, it's much more demanding than that, and it's much more of a sort of living, breathing thing that is all constantly evolving and changing. Yeah, well, was, what's interesting about our show is that like we're you know we're creating it from from scratch. So we had these thirteen episodes to like really figure out these characters, um, figure out these relationships, um, and you know it's it's not like a Modern Family, you know, which has been on for. I think seven, six, seven seasons, they now have like a formula, you know? They have like, they sort of, it, it's easier at that point. You can sort of just step in and like do your thing. But with our show, me and Martha are also theater actors. Um, and so, you know, we're all about collaboration. We're all about like the work and text work and wanting to like pick things apart and analyze, um, <clears throat> which I don't think happens a lot in television. Um, 
and especially like network sitcom television. So television is essentially a machine that churns out content, but you and Martha get in there and kind of no, I was, slow, well, yeah. slow the I conveyor like, belt I down like to a think little I'd bit. I change that. No, I um, <laughs> put your hand on the conveyor belt and just stop it for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, of course, I think like you know, knock on wood, we're in like our sixth season, and at a certain point, we can just fall into a rhythm. Um, but having and not having these twenty-two episodes, these thirteen episodes, are very, it was very, very intense. Um, <clears throat> and we're also filming out of order, and then they are airing out of order, so it's like triply out of order. And we, I like to say, we found our like stride about eight episodes in. And so, the episode that aired the other day was, I think, like our third episode that we filmed. Um, yeah, so it's interesting when people like comment and tweet like, best episode yet, gets better every week. And I'm like, no, <laughs> sort of. But like, they don't know, you know, they don't know the, the order in which it, it all was filmed. Was the order changing in, in post and they were figuring it out then? Or did that's they know how, going into the show? I think that's shoot? just like how the network, the network does it. Some things maybe are, you know, people respond well to certain things, so they want to jump on that and... If they like a character, they'll air, you know, a couple oh, episodes wow. with that character in it or, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but I think there are only, like, four episodes that had to air in a specific order. The last two, um, the finale and the one before that, and then the first episode and the episode that comes after that. Yeah. Well, as a New York theater actor, you must have been pretty excited when you found out that your, your mom was going to be played by Martha Plimpton. Yeah, yeah, yes, I was. I got really He's a New York really legend, lucky. you know. Don't I know? Um, my mom, I my mom lives on the Upper West Side, and me and Martha spent um, some some years living like two blocks away from each other and never knowing it. Uh, and we had a lot of friends in common, and <clears throat> we had just never met. And so when we finally did, we it, it was a we were fast friends, fast friends. Talked about Zay bars all day. Just all day, it was fairway market all day. Got mail locations yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Riverside Park times, yeah. Um, the GLAAD Awards are, are, are this weekend, right? Yeah. The GLAAD Awards are this weekend, yes. And are you, take, are you taking part for the, because of the show and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be presenting an award with Andrew Rannells, which is very oh. fun. Yeah, Andrew Rannells! And yeah, glad. Yeah, and glad. Yeah, and um, glad, guys. Yeah. Um, Why is that getting... <laughs> yeah, so that'll be fun. I've never done something like that before, so that'll be interesting. Do you have to get up and like sort of stand next to him, and there's like two jokes written, and you yeah, kind of do the prompt Yeah, they like thing? sent us a script the other day. Andrew, you're great in girls. And literally, are, no, literally. And they're like, we have a lot in common. Like, we both like Broadway. And you're like, who wrote this? <laughs> Yeah, it's not great. I'm hoping we can, like, get in there and, like, you know. Do you have a rehearsal, or do you just get up and, and do that? I don't know. I don't think we have a rehearsal. I think we just get up and do it. It's going to be happens, great. What happens in a, is in a scenario like that? Because you feel like you could, if you go off script. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're televised. Like, Are they televised? Awards, is there, like, an awards show mafia where they're kind of, like, he went off script once, and never, we're never having him back here? I'd like to think so. That sounds fun and culty. <laughs> <laughs> Just one producer who runs all award shows. Yeah, organized, organized crime awards. Organized, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the audience for some questions. Is anyone have any questions out here? Yeah. Hey, it is so cool. You are so smart and insightful. <laughs> and and how, <laughs> So you kind of just touched totally. on this, but was there, was there any times where your character, there was something in the script or maybe even something on the set where you kind of said, you know, I don't know if my character would yeah. really say that? Yeah. Um, me and Martha, Martha and I? Don't worry about it. I'm so smart. Um, and insightful. And insightful. Um, about like four or five episodes in, <clears throat> I read the first draft of a script and read this one line that was like a little too biting, a little like too knowing. Um, and I it was just like, for lack of a better word, it was just like really sassy. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if Kenny would say this. So I, I went to Martha and I was like, did you read this line? And she was like, not gonna happen. And I was like, okay, let's go talk. So we went and talked with one of our showrunners, David Windsor. And I brought it up and he was like, listen, I think at this point, 
<clears throat> you know, we're all just meeting each other. We're trying to like create these characters. There are 14 writers in the room that have a completely, that all have their own ideas of who a character is. And then I come in and have my own idea of who the character is. There's network television, it's like a lot of cooks in the kitchen, a lot. Um, and he, he was basically like, listen, I think we're getting a little carried away with the idea of like writing for Noah, you know? Cause I'm, it was at the time I was like 21 and had been out since I was 14 and was pretty knowing and just like super smart and insightful. Um, <laughs> and so I was basically like, this, this is not, it's not Noah, it's like 16 year old naive Noah who like is just coming out and discovering these things for the first time. And he was like, I get that. So they wrote a line for Noah, not for Kenny essentially. Exactly, yeah. And so again, that's like part of the, the navigating the like new television thing, you know? Well, that's so hard because I think, I feel like TV writers, and I don't know about your showrunner, but TV writers, the best shows are always complimented for starting to write for their actors. You think about right. like The Office or right. even Modern Family. Eventually, the writers know the actors, know what they think they're really great at, right. and write towards that, and then are complimented to high heaven. Right, for and I think it's like navigating, like in. writing to the strengths of that actor, but not just writing for that person, you know? And so it's like a, a, a little, we had to like find that balance. But Do you remember what the line did. was? I don't, I don't. Would it be? It was like in a fight. It was like me and Martha having a fight, and I said something like super snarky, and I was like, "Oh God, I would be like Kenny would be slapped for that." <laughs> uh, next question. Hi, my name is Anthony, and hey, Anthony. I love the show. Thanks. Um, so my question is, how close are you and your TV family off cam, like off the screen? Like, do you guys hang out? Do you go out together? Like stuff like I that. I live in the backyard of Jay Ferguson. I'm not kidding. I live in his guest house, uh, the guy who plays my dad on the show. Um, <clears throat> I have an adorable little one bedroom guest house that I live in in his backyard. Uh, we're very, very close. Uh, Wait, do you really live in his guest house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not how did kidding. That, how, did, how did that happen? I, I got this, like, two, I got this uh, ridiculously expensive Airbnb, because I moved from here for, to LA for the show. Not like permanently, never leave New York, but I was like, hey. Um, but I was, you know, I went to LA for the show and I had to find housing and it's like pretty hard to do. And so I was gonna like Airbnb in somebody else's guest house. And there are all these like rules and like no loud music. I was like, I'm young and free. I wanna like live my life. Um, I had a network show. I'm gonna yeah, party if I want up? to. What's up? And uh, Jay called me and he, he had a friend who was like on the outs with his wife. And he was like, listen, my friend was gonna get divorced, but now he's not, so my guest house is free. And I was like, sick. And so, yeah, so I moved in, and I'm still there. I have been since July. Are you a member of the family over there, too? Oh, yeah, he has three little boys that I babysit for every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they say, Noah, why do you sleep so much? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hi, I'm Rafi. Hi, Rafi. I just want to say I really love the show and watching you, and I think you're fantastic. Nice. And I want to know what has been uh, your most challenging moment as an actor so far? Like in life? In life, in your career. OK. Um, <laughs> I got you. I, uh, I was doing this play called Yosemite at the Rattlestick Theater, which is on the other side of Sixth. Um, and uh, it was the first like super, super dramatic play I had ever done. I was 17, I was a sophomore in high school, and I was, it, it, was, a, it was a really dark play. The light like lights up and like there's me, I'm like walking around, my older sister's like holding a dead baby in a trash bag, my older brother's digging a grave, and then halfway through the play, our mother character, our mother, comes on stage with a shotgun, and then a lot of screaming happens, and then she leaves, shoots herself, blackout. That's the play. So I was like- Sounds awesome. Yeah, so uplifting, <laughs> so uplifting and joyful. Um, but at 17, I had never like really experienced having to live in a world for like two hours a day that was like that dark. It was really hard. And so every night I'd like go home and just like eat an entire bag of Tostitos and like, <laughs> fall asleep and like wake up and go to school late. 
Um, just completely eating my feelings. Um, and so that was, that was like a, an amazing learning experience for me, uh, learning how to be able to, you know, be an actor and like completely invest yourself in this world for two hours and then be able to like just leave it at the theater, you know, and like go on with your life and not have it affect you. I think that was like pretty difficult, but I figured it out. Are your parents actors? Um, my mom used to be a director. Now she is a yoga teacher. She's opening a yoga studio on the Bowery called Katona Yoga on the Bowery. What's up? Um, and my dad used to be an actor. Um, and then he <laughs> became a psychoanalyst. <laughs> when you decided, uh, which is fun as a child. So fun. Yeah. Uh, when you decided that you wanted to be an actor, how did they respond to it? Very well. The, my entire family, my sister is an actress who's a huge audiobook actress. She narrates like the Divergent books and Winter's Bone. She's like won Mad Awards for it. My brother is a musician. Uh, his band is called Yoke Lore. He just came out with an EP called Far Shore. Look it up. Um, my cousin Sam is playing Macduff in Sleep No More. My other cousin is the front man of a band called Show Me the Body. <laughs> We're all goddamn performers. Like, <laughs> Very dramatic family reunions. Really dramatic family reunions, for sure. <laughs> Next question. Hello, Noah. Thank you for being here. Um, Thank you. What, 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 what advice were you given during your career, during early on in your career, in your acting career? What, what type of advice were you given early on in your career? What was the best advice, advice you were given yeah. early on in your career? The best advice given to me early on in the career? Um, I think a lot of times people, there's actually a scene about this in a chorus line. Uh, a lot of people, I don't, know what, I don't know what you'd like call this, but a lot of people like to give themselves like a timeline in terms of like, at 25 I'll have won this, and at like 28 I'll have done this and this and this and that. And it, it, somebody was like, it shouldn't be about that, you know? It should be about doing good work, surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah, best advice. About the journey rather than the uh, outcome. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. When is the real O'Neill's on? When can people watch the show? Tuesdays, 8.30 on ABC, the last two episodes, the finale and the one before that. Please watch, and if you're on social media, we find out about season two by 6 p.m. tomorrow. So in the next 24 hours, as much as you can, tweet the words, Hashtag renew the real O'Neills. No, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations. Yeah.